Warrants in hand, the posse of four lawmen sped to Klondike by car. During the night, they mounted horses and began the 25-mile journey over rugged terrain toward Rattlesnake Canyon. Three county lawmen and one federal marshal, intent on bringing the four wanted men living in power cabin to justice. There were so many hard feelings against them because Jeff hadn't cooperated, Ola had died mysteriously, all these things had happened that suddenly they were past any kind of compromise that could have been made to bring these guys in quietly. Federal Marshal Frank Haynes recounted the details of the posse's ascent. I don't know what time it was, but it was good and dark when the four of us left Klondike. Kane was riding a big brown horse, and Frank McBride was riding a mule. I didn't know the country, but we started out over a trail, and we followed that trail until we come to a little ranch house. There wasn't anybody home at the garden place, and we went on up above there a short ways and built a fire. I don't remember what time of night we stopped, but we left our camp between 4 and 4.30 in the morning. We decided it would take us until about daylight to reach this place where we expected to find the Power Boys. U.S. Federal Marshal Frank Haynes. Possumman rode closer to the Power's cabin. Martin said, this is not a good idea. This is not the time to go in here at daylight and surprise these people. This is not a good idea. And Wooten turned to my father and said, Mart, don't turn a white feather, which implied cowardice. We rode up the canyon then until Kane Wooten stopped and said that he thought we was pretty close to Power Cabin. It was dark down in the canyon, awfully dark. McBride says we'd better be a little late than too early. There's a little side canyon coming down off of this ridge, and the trail coming down, a steep place for probably 75 feet, swung around in this little canyon and turned down, coming right near the house. U.S. Federal Marshal Frank Haynes. They get there far before dawn, which was very typical of law enforcement. So in other words, you want to get there while everyone's sleeping, and you want to stake out the place, and you want to take up your defensive positions. Usually, it's watching windows and doors and you wait for them to wake up. Because when somebody is waking up, uh, they're usually half dressed, uh, they might be going out to relieve themselves or start a fire. In other words, they're not ready for any kind of confrontation. That's when you want to spring your trap, is right when they wake up. So that's very typical of law enforcement in the territory, is you stake out the place and you wait for them to wake up. And you come as armed as possible, because again, the first and only rule is don't die. So. You're going to have your guns drawn, and you're going to be ready for these guys because you don't want them to shoot back at you first. And if you suspect anything's amiss, if they show any sign of non-resistance, you start firing away immediately. That was the ethos of law enforcement that existed. No questions asked. Anything short of absolute surrender could get you killed. Tom Power recounted the events that occurred the morning of February 10th, 1918. 